The United States Commission on International Religious Freedom released its annual report last week detailing the increase of religious violations around the world. The main focus of the report is to highlight countries that violate religious freedom and to bolster U.S. efforts to advance freedom of religion in those countries. Twelve countries, including Nicaragua and Nigeria, were designated countries of concern. Eleven countries were listed as the State Department's special watch list. The study is based on information collected in 2022. And joining me now is Jason Poblet, president of Global Liberty Alliance. Jason, great to be with you today. Uh, let's talk more about this report. Not only is Nigeria and Nicaragua listed here, but so is Cuba. For those who may not be aware, what makes that country one of particular concern? Thank you for having us. And yes, Cuba finally is on that list. It's something that should have happened a while ago. And to understand what's happening in Cuba and why it's on this list, an important list that hopefully will open the door to sanctions and no more waivers on sanctions, which was included in that report. Cuba is a totalitarian police state, and it has baked into its system culturally eliminating religious life from all of Cuban society. So they're a socialist country on their way to communism. And within the Communist Party system, all the way down to the block level, uh, you have a system in place that's designed to target people of faith. And if you tow a certain line, uh, they tend to leave you alone. However, the moment you steer away from the party line and what they say, and I'll share with you one example now, what they say is acceptable religious behavior, there's an office called the Office of Religious Affairs, which is part of the Cuban Communist Party. It's very similar to what they did in Stasi uh, the Stasi did during the Cold War over in East Germany and other countries that had similar repressive systems. And everything from three people coming together to study the Bible to attendance of certain religious observances in, for example, non-Catholic churches, if you are part of another denomination and you are starting an independent church, if you don't register with the party, that's considered kind of revolutionary. They can come after you and they target you. And the reason why it's important to have it in this report is that it sets it out there not only for our government to set the right tone and the right message on policy, but also for other governments, we hope, uh, to step up and do their part to ensure that religious freedom is uh, an important part of their foreign policy in places like Cuba and others. I want to get uh, to Nicaragua now. It's also a country of particular concern. And as you know, there have been numerous attacks against the Catholic Church. In fact, a recent report by researcher and lawyer Martha Patricia Molina uh, was titled Nicaragua, a Persecuted Church. She documents over 500 attacks perpetrated by the Ortega regime in just the last five years. What more do you know about this? And what can you tell us about this rise of anti-Catholicism in, in socialist-controlled nations in Latin America? America. It's, an, it's an excellent report. I think folks should take a look at it. And the Global Liberty Alliance has also been documenting cases probably uh, for several years, not at that intensity because uh, there are great groups like that one doing that work there. But it's no different than what we're seeing in socialist Cuba. And it's the same sophisticated Cuba, by the way, a created system that's designed to keep people of faith in check. The biggest challenge, by the way, in Latin America to socialism and communist governments is the Roman Catholic faith, the people of faith, the believers, because at the root of all of this, as you know, is culture. They're trying to change the culture and they use regulations, they use the color of law, they use uh, systems that may seem perfectly fine out here, but ultimately what they are doing is waging a culture war. Their goal is to eliminate the Catholic Church if they can. In fact, some of them will say that's that's impossible. I say it's not impossible. I say if we keep, if we don't check them the way these reports do, the way civil society does, uh, there's going to be problems. The Nicaraguan Catholic Church uh, has been under attack for quite some time. A few years ago, we reported a very horrible incident that has happened in several places where they were even attacking cat tabernacles. They were torching tabernacles. So there were people going into churches and trying to desecrate the churches, the, the Blessed Sacrament. And it, it's something that we saw as an outlier. Uh, unfortunately, it was the beginning of what we continue to see, intense persecution. And um, our hearts and prayers are with the people in Nicaragua because they are going also uh, through a very difficult time. And it's not just there, though. It's in several other countries. Yeah, and, indeed. And Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but very important conversation and, and hope to pick it up with you again at some point. Thank, thank you, you for having us.